podcast. We're always delighted that you decided to join us. Today is especially special because it's Good Friday as we know it for the Easter holiday and it's such a wonderful day to celebrate, of course, our Savior's sacrifice for our sins. So welcome again today and we're excited about our lesson that we have planned and also wanted to announce and we're going to be announcing this at the end as well that as we finish up Revelations, we're excited to announce that we're going to start a teaching on Genesis, which is one of my favorite, all-time favorite. So we've done the last book and then we're going to go back into the first book. So we pray as we continue and finish up this book of Revelation that you find something that will make a difference in your life. So it's exciting to go into your Bible and to go to the very last book of your Bible and God revealed to you everything that he has planned from the beginning to the ending. That's what Revelation is so, uh, that's what makes Revelation so wonderful is the fact that we do not have to be left in the dark concerning what God is doing today and what's going on in the world around us. Now, when you begin to look at the situations, the circumstances, the various challenges that we have today, it's good to know that God has already given us the end game of everything. Mm -hmm. In this book of Revelation, we know for a certainty that, that God is going to bring things to a close all unrighteousness is going to be dealt with. All righteousness is going to be rewarded. And our righteousness is not our own righteousness, but it's the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. And we actually have that as our righteousness. So then we begin to recognize that it's not whether we can live good enough but it's whether we can have enough of Christ in our lives so that he can be manifested in his fullness through us. That's what Revelation reveals more than anything. It reveals the fact that God is going to have the ultimate say in everything that's going on. And that simply means then that whenever we look at every event, every occasion, everything that's happening around us, we are not in the dark. If you're a child of God, if you are a Bible student, mm -hmm. then you are not in the dark concerning mm -hmm. what's going on. And that's what I love about God, because e even in the events of our life and with Easter and studying the book of Revelation, you think about how dark it may look sometimes, how bleak it may look, the situations, our lives. But it's good to know and have reassurance that, you know, that's not the final say. At the end of this story, there's some light at the end of the tunnel, so to speak. So just like the lesson we're going to be talking about today, there's some light there. With Easter holiday, there's some light there. We know that he died, but we also know that he rose again. So with every situation, never look at it as the final. Never look at it as this is it, because with God, all things are possible. Anything can be resurrected, people, things, whatever the case may be marriages wherever you are remember that there's nothing there's nothing is final until God said it's final and that's the beauty of the word of God because he lets us see the beginning he lets us realize that we can have victory in the middle but also we can have victory at the very end and when you look at this and you look at uh, our lives today mm -hmm. uh, we are resurrected beings we yes. walk in a newness of life because we have been brought from death to to life mm -hmm. through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. And when you began to look at where we're studying now, we're toward the very end of the book of Revelation, the 21st chapter. And mm -hmm. in this particular chapter, the latter portion, the last 18 verses of scripture mm -hmm. uh, will be dealing with the new Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. Last time we were together, we talked about the new heaven, the new earth, and we uh, were given just a, a footnote concerning that new Jerusalem. Well, it takes the rest of this 21st chapter actually describing how life is going to be. Mm -hmm. And as I've said before, do not be uh, sitting by as a believer, believing that your time of authority, your time mm -hmm. of power, mm -hmm. your time of being empowered is uh, not just uh, uh, something for the here and now, but this empowerment this uh, getting accustomed to walking in authority mm -hmm. and power is preparation for how life is going to be when this world passes away. Amen. And before we go into the part about the New Jerusalem, what it's going to be like, we wanted to back up just a little bit and look at that verse 7 and verse 21 of Revelations. It says, He that overcometh shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. And you may look at this and say, okay, this is gender specific 
specific, so to say, but we want to expound on that today to let you know that it's not according to Galatians 3 and 28, because it says there's neither male nor female, Gentile nor Jew. So we wanted to co go back and cover that and let us let you know, see the correlation here, even though it says, I will be their God and he will be, shall be our son, let you know or remind you that God is not gender neutral in this, neither, he's never been gender neutral. So, so uh, yeah, but gender specific. I'm talking gender specific. Thank you. Specific. <laughs> but, yeah. but as you as you look at this, then you come to the realization mm -hmm. that there's no no need to reinterpret the Bible or rewrite the Bible, but mm -hmm. just know the mind and the heart of Christ in the matter. Right. And when you look at it from this perspective, throughout the New Testament, God mm -hmm. speaks about the the sons of God. Mm -hmm. He speaks about sons. And if you are not careful, uh, you will begin to think that God is neglecting the, the women. Mm -hmm. But just recognize that in the sight of God, there is neither male nor female, mm -hmm. but we are uh, gender neutral, which simply means that uh, when God speaks of son, he's speaking of male mm -hmm. and female. You know, I enjoy the, uh, the fifth chapter of Genesis. That's when God does a recap of creation. Mm -hmm. And he makes the statement in that fifth chapter of Genesis. He said that he created them male and female mm -hmm. and that he called their name Adam. Mm -hmm. He called both of them Adam. So you see, God did not call Eve, Eve. Mm -hmm. Eve was actually given, that name was given to Eve by Adam. Mm -hmm. Adam looked at woman, he saw woman with a wound, and he called her name Eve. But God never called her Eve. God always called her Adam. Because when he spoke to one, he was speaking to both of them. You know, and, and as you examine that, then you begin to, to understand how important it is to be equally yoked in the kingdom of God. Because mm -hmm. you see, whenever you're a husband and wife, God does not look at the male or the female. He looks at you as being one. Amen. And it's important to recognize that in the kingdom to come, in the literal kingdom to come, that we all will be recognized, male and females, we are going to be recognized as sons of God. Mm -hmm. Well, when does this start? According to 1 John, the third chapter, mm -hmm. it makes the statement, now yeah. are we the, the sons, sons of God. Of God. That's right. The 8th chapter of Romans gives us uh, a general view of how things are going to be when it tells us that all of creation moans and groans and awaits the manifestation of the sons of God. Jesus made it plain and simple throughout his teaching that he was not concerned whether you were a man or a woman or not. Mm -hmm. He was concerned with whether you believed that he is the savior of the world. Right. So when you began to look at the latter part of this chapter, uh, this book of Revelation, chapter 21, just recognize that God is not just talking about the men here, but he's talking about the men and the women when he said, I will be your God and you shall be my son. Mm -hmm. And God is a, a, he's a spirit. We are a spirit being, although we can cope, compose in a body, we are spirit. So the most important part to God is our spirit is where we are spiritually. So in that, when we're talking about, you know, it doesn't matter if you're male or female, black or white, we have to consider that when we're, jet, when we're trying to figure Figure out who's who and who's of the kingdom, who's not of the kingdom. It's a spiritual matter. And that's what God sees us as. He sees us as his sons. He sees us as his daughters. And although it's just referencing sons, as a female, I am still the son of God. And everything that's promised in the word of God to the sons is promised to you and I. So we have to remember that. Don't let that trip you up when you see that in the word of God, when it doesn't specify daughter because it's still talking to us as well. And, and when you begin to look at what God's prepared for us, uh, you know, a lot of us today, we want to keep things kind of muted and, you know, kind of dull and, and, you know, we want to make sure we don't draw attention to ourselves. Mm -hmm. And, and you know, you, you know the religious uh, language that's used today uh, among a lot of circles. But uh, some of us are going to really be amazed at the brightness of our future, right. of the brightness of where we're going to be living. You might as well get used to living uh, in color today. Mm -hmm. Living, when I say in color, having bright things around you because mm -hmm. in heaven, it's a mighty bright place, meaning right. there's there's vivid colors, there's there's, a, there's there's jewelry, there's gems, there's all kind of precious minerals and all that are, are make up a part of this new Jerusalem right. where we are going to be resting and, 
and ruling and abiding throughout uh, the rest of eternity. Amen. Now, if you look at Revelation 21 and 2, we'll start there. And then, of course, it goes on to describe what he, this new Jerusalem is. Revelation 21 and 2 says, And I, John, saw the holy city, New, new Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And then, of course, in verse 9, it goes on to explain what he saw with this bride. And there came unto me one of the seven angels, which had seven vows, full of seven the last plagues, and talked with me, saying, Come hither, I will show thee the bride, the lamb's wife. So he sees a vision. First of all, it shows it says, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride, adorned for her husband. And then it begins to explain that the angel said, Come and see. So he's showing him the bride, New Jerusalem, what he's seeing in the spirit realm. So so when you when you begin to look at how God operates, mm -hmm. uh, especially he demonstrates in the book of Revelation, God mm -hmm. does not do something in a corner. Mm -hmm. But God's a great God. He has a great great manner or way of presenting things. Mm -hmm. And, you know, Jesus made the statement. He said in his father's house are, are many mm -hmm. mansions. Uh, now we find that there has been a new heaven mm -hmm. and a new earth. And now we're going to have a brand new city. Mm -hmm. There will not be four or five cities or three or uh, two or three cities, but there'll be one city. Mm -hmm. It will be the holy city. It will be called the new Jerusalem. And as you study the scripture here, you begin to find that it has a foundation mm -hmm. that has a specific structure. It has walls, it has gates, mm -hmm. and uh, it's four square, meaning it's uh, it has four corners or four, four sections to it. So when you look at all of this and the color of it, the, the, the jewels, the, the minerals, the, the, uh, the gems and all that make up mm -hmm. uh, the, uh, the uh, circumference of this city, mm -hmm. you can actually get lost in the colors. Mm -hmm. Why do you think when God wanted to remind Noah that there would be no more, the world would no longer be destroyed by water, why did he, he uh, give him the rainbow. sign of a beautiful rainbow? Mm -hmm. God is a God of color. Mm -hmm. When I say color, I mean God loves living color color mm -hmm. around him. Amen. And what I love about this particular verse is talking about how it came down from heaven, meaning it's been prepared by God. And you think about the mansions that it tells about in John that it's prepared for us, but God is preparing things for us. He has prepared this for us and it's coming down. Something heavenly coming down that's been prepared by God that's coming to earth that for us to dwell in. And I love the fact as well that it says prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And you think about as a bride, when you're making preparation to be presented to your future husband, you have the best of the best. Everything that you are is at its top. And this is how this city was. It was like with the jewels everywhere. It was Everything was beautiful. Every, everything was in its element and its pureness of beauty. And this is how this city that God has prepared for us looks like. And, and you know, God wanted John to be able to get a good view of what was going on. So it says in the... Um, uh, in the 10th verse that mm -hmm. he uh, carried, uh, the angel carried John away in the spirit mm -hmm. to a great and high mountain and showed him that great city, the holy Jerusalem descending out of heaven from God. And, you know, it was, if to, to, to picture it in your mind's eye, mm -hmm. if you will, imagine the scene mm -hmm. of the bride as she enters the room yeah. and she begins to walk down the aisle in all of her beauty mm -hmm. and her grace. Well, that's the way God is going to bring forth that New Jerusalem. Wow. He's going to make sure that all attention is going to be focused on what he has prepared mm -hmm. for a prepared people. Mm -hmm. And it's going to be the, the New Jerusalem and it's going to descend out of heaven, which means God is not creating creating it uh, from the dust of the earth or from the dirt of the, dirt of the earth, mm -hmm. but God has created it from heavenly yeah. things. You see, there are precious minerals in heaven. Mm -hmm. There are gems, there are jewels, there's all kind of great, uh, magnificent wealth mm -hmm. in heaven. Mm -hmm. You might as well, as a believer, you might as well get used to wealth because you see, you are going to be inheriting the fullness of the wealth of the end entire universe. Mm -hmm. We are not talking about just uh, uh, an inheritance of, of, uh, of maybe some, some uh, fool's gold or things that, that look shiny like brass and all. We're talking the real deal. Mm -hmm. We're talking God actually uh, building uh, our future with real things full of the wealth of all of his creative glory. Mm -hmm. 
And, you know, I think about, you know, the psalm that talks about, you know, David, when he was saying, you know, he was shaping in iniquity. We, we're born from imperfection, the dust of this earth, you know. But heaven, he's prepared something perfect. Can you imagine something that's being prepared for us that's using perfect everything, perfect materials? Us, of course, we're imperfect. We're in this earthen vessel. But God is preparing something for us that's been created and prepared from perfection itself. Now you're looking at Revelation chapter uh, chapter 21 verse 11. It says that the city is having the glory of God, mm -hmm. and her light was like unto the stone most precious, even like a jasper stone, clear as crystal. Mm -hmm. Which means that it didn't need spotlights, it mm -hmm. didn't need any natural lights, but it had a light emanating from it. Mm -hmm. It was lit up. the mm -hmm. The holy city was lit up with a light that was not natural. It was a supernatural ra uh, uh, radiance mm -hmm. that was actually coming from the holy city. Mm -hmm. It's a good thing to have uh, bright sunny days, but the sun mm -hmm. and, and, and all the elements of the earth will never compare to the glory mm -hmm. that God's going to be revealing to us at the end of time in this holy city. Amen. It reminds me of a saying that I, I heard in, in Maryland one time about your future. It says, my future is so bright. Right, I gotta wear shades, and this reminds me of that because it, that's the way we should be looking at our future. It's so bright, it's so promising that we really, literally, gotta wear shades because the brightness of God's glory, and it has nothing to do with us. And we have to remember, if we look at where we are now, if we look at our circumstances, if we look at our our bank accounts, all these things that we're looking at, we're not gonna be able to see that. But you have to look at everything and say, you know what, my future is so bright, literally, that I have to wear shades. I've got to put something on my eyes to be able to contain this and you will always be positive you will always see it from God's perspective because that's the way he looks at us he doesn't look at us where we are but he looks at us where he's taking us our job is to stay in the car to stay in the vehicle to stay in on the journey knowing that at the end of the journey I'm going to get to my destination and it's going to be overwhelming overwhelming you know when, whenever you you examine your life and you begin to look at all the things you're enduring now, mm -hmm. all the things you're going through. Just remember, we are speaking of things that are not exactly. as though they were. And this is not just for uh, us in this active here and now, but mm -hmm. it's also for our distant future. Amen. We need to be accustomed to, to the creative powers that come from our lips as our hearts are centered in the right place mm -hmm. with God. Listen to me. The, the, the works of faith are not going to change just because you transition to the other side. Amen. You will still be a man or woman of faith, walking in faith, walking in the knowledge and the understanding that you are a creative being. Mm -hmm. Did you hear what I said? You are a creative being. Being, which means that you can create something out of nothing. Amen. You keep looking around you and calling everything around you nothing where you're getting what you call out. Mm -hmm. It's time to begin to look around mm -hmm. you, darlings, and speak of things that are not it's as time. though they were. Mm -hmm. Stop as men and women of God calling it like you see it. Because mm -hmm. you see, your sight is limited. Right. You've got to begin to call things the way God sees it. Amen. If God sees you as being a son of of God, then you need to recognize that they may see me as a woman. Mm -hmm. They may see me as a weak man, mm -hmm. but God sees me as his son. Mm -hmm. And you know what it means when you think about son? Son is the seed bearer. Mm -hmm. Son is the one who mm -hmm. actually has the responsibility of carrying uh, the fullness of the, the vision mm -hmm. within themselves to project right. that vision. Mm -hmm. And then when you begin to look at, at husband and wife or look at, at, at spouses, you begin to recognize that God sets it up the same way in the body of Christ. He has a visionary mm -hmm. who is the seed uh, bearer. Mm -hmm. Then he has uh, uh, them with a companion, whether it be male or female, and they become the seed carrier. Mm -hmm. And as you look at it from that perspective, one projects mm -hmm. and the other protects. Did you hear what I said? Mm -hmm. One projects and the other protects. Mm -hmm. You may be, uh, be a man mm -hmm. and uh, you may be the one who is the, the responsible for carrying mm -hmm. or assisting in the carrying of the vision. Right. Uh, you may be a woman and you may be responsible for being the seating of the, the, the vision.
division, mm -hmm. seeding, S-E-E-D-I-N-G, mm -hmm. the seeding of division. Mm -hmm. Just remember the way things are now, it's going to be just a rehearsal mm -hmm. for the way things are going to be at the end of time mm -hmm. and at the beginning of the, the fullness of what God's prepared for us. Mm -hmm. We are all sons of God. We all deserve the inheritance That's of right. sons, whether we're male or mm -hmm. female, and this holy city is being brought down as a bride, being brought down as someone who is to fulfill the containment of everything that we have ever imagined or thought of in God. Mm -hmm. I know the Spirit of God reveals things to us, the deep things of God, but darlings, all that he has revealed to us does not even begin to compare with the way things are going to be in this holy city. You're mm -hmm. talking about a magnificent city coming down from heaven. Mm -hmm. It's lit up by the glory of God mm -hmm. and it has all kinds of precious minerals and, and jewels and gems. It's laced throughout the city, the mm -hmm. walls and the gates and the the uh, the uh, highway or the or the uh, foundation, all of this stuff is made out of what is the very best that God can provide. Mm -hmm. Remember, when God starts working in your life, yes. He is not going to give you secondhand stuff. Mm -hmm. He is going to give you the very best. Mm -hmm. You just have to be a, a creator. You have to see what God sees. Mm -hmm. Sometimes what God gives us looks like a mess. Sometimes <laughs> it looks like something that needs to be thrown away. Mm -hmm. But God looks beyond what you see mm -hmm. and he looks at that creative anointing mm -hmm. that he has put inside of you. So yes. when God gives you something, mm -hmm. don't see it the way your natural eye sees it. Mm -hmm. See it the way God sees it. Because you see, with God working in your life, you can create whatever you need for from whatever is there. When God got ready to create man, mm -hmm. he used the dirt and made the most magnificent creature you have ever seen on the face of the planet. Mm -hmm. Whatever you're getting right now, whatever you're moving into, a lot of us want a finished work. Mm -hmm. We want everything laid out for us and everything perfect. That's then right. that's boring. You know, I need something I can work with, darlings. I need something that I can see my faith growing and maturing and operating in. I like seeing a mess and turn it into a bless. Did you hear what I'm saying? I enjoy the fact that when God gives you something, it's not necessarily what you see with the natural eye, but it's what you see with the spiritual creative eye of God. You can recreate your surroundings. You you can recreate everything around you by seeing it the way God sees it. Stop looking at even people mm -hmm. the way uh, people look at people. Start looking at people the way God sees them. Mm -hmm. And God so loved the world mm -hmm. that he gave his only begotten son. He didn't, uh, Jesus didn't just die for saved folk. Mm -hmm. He died for the unsaved. Pre-adventure said God would one uh, die uh, for uh, someone that's good, mm -hmm. but God commended his love toward mm -hmm. us in that while we were yet sinners, mm -hmm. Christ died for us. Have you read the mm -hmm. fifth and the sixth chapter of Romans? It blesses my socks off when mm -hmm. I see how God created us uh, in the fullness of him, mm -hmm. working with something that was inferior yes. and something that was not supposed to be able to be glorified. That's right. And it was so many good things you said, so I'm going to try to remember my points. But you were talking about you know, how we should be able to see a mess and make it a bless. And one of my favorite shows and you may be familiar with it is fixer upper and you know i think about how with our lives you know god we are just god's fixer upper you know but on that show what they do is they keep the good stuff if the foundation is great they keep the stuff that they can work with and that's all god is doing in our life if we allow him to just allow him to work the professions in our life through his word and at the end you know the show may start out where it's look like a shack but at the end, you have a beautiful home and it takes work. You know, sometimes it just needs some paint. Sometimes it just needs a, you know, you need to tear a whole wall down. And that's okay. But they take what they have and they use it to make a beautiful dwelling place. And that's the way we have to look at our lives sometimes. It may look like, you know, how in the world am I going to make this a home? How in the world can I take this, just this little bit and make something so much. But if we allow God to give us the insight, to give us the revelation, we can do that. And that's one of the things that I love about when I grew up, my mother had a gift to always be able to go into a place 
that looked impossible to be able to fix up. But she was able to clean it up. She was able to fix it up and make it a dwelling place for us, make it a home for us. And we have to be that, that way in terms of God. And you mentioned also the seed carrier and the seed bearer. Mm -hmm. And we have to remember, know our part, because both parts are important. You can't be the seed carrier and be like, well, if you don't get my seed, you ain't got nothing. No, we have to be, know your part, because even with the seed carrier, you have to have somebody to bear the seed, whether it's a male or a female. I like what Paul said in 1 Corinthians. He said, I have planted Apollo's water, but God gave the increase. So all of us are needed, whether you're the seed carrier or the seed bearer. We have to know our part and work together and know that in God's plan scheme of things, that everybody has the part. Everybody has a part to play and know that part so we can be effective in our part. And the final uh, results of anything you do is increase. Mm -hmm. Don't you ever forget that. There's got to be increase. You mm -hmm. cannot say you're doing something for the Lord and you're in vision mm -hmm. if it's not increasing. Right. If it stops increasing, you've gotten out of the will of God mm -hmm. and you've gotten out of the blessing plan of God and you've gotten out of vision. Right. Vision is ever increasing. Well, where is it headed? Mm -hmm. What is God trying to do with us? Mm -hmm. He is trying to get us accustomed to having the best mm -hmm. by using us to be the blessing we are to be in in this world. The Bible tells us straight up mm -hmm. that we are the city that's set on the hill. Yes. We don't need to be looking to the world mm -hmm. to bail us out or to make us great. We, the world needs to be looking to us to see yes. the true greatness. He said, you are the light of the world. The world should, we should not be looking to the world for light, for darkness, for mm -hmm. how we should function, mm -hmm. how we should live. The world needs to be looking to mm -hmm. us. Why? Mm -hmm. Because we are the light of the world. Mm -hmm. We are the city that's sitting on the, the, the hill and we need to recognize that in the last uh, days of this whole uh, existence of time, God has a new heaven, a new earth, and a holy city, and he is rolling out mm -hmm. the glorious carpet for all of us to see just how he really is. Whenever I get to heaven, dollars, I am not going to be trying to tear up the streets of gold and hide them in my house. Uh, <laughs> when I get there, I'm not going to be trying to pull up right. the, the pearls off the gate right. and right. put them in my and hide them because I, I, I I may not ever be able to see that. No, mm -hmm. when you get to heaven, you are going to be accustomed to the things in heaven. Yes. God, listen to me very mm -hmm. carefully. Mm -hmm. God wants to bless you with the very yes. best. But in order for it to be the very best, you got to do with whatever you got, what mm -hmm. God did with you. Amen. God pulled us out of a mess. Yes. God took us and we were nothing. Many of us, we could not have bought a, a, a nickel's worth of dog meat with the kind of life we Amen. had lived. Right. But God took a hold of us and he created something special, something unique, something that could be trusted. Someone, men and women of integrity, men and women in a spirit mm -hmm. of excellence, God took the nobodies that we all were mm -hmm. and is turning us into somebodies and you need to know whatever comes in your mm -hmm. hand you need to be doing the same thing with it mm -hmm. why because whenever we get to the end God's going to show us just exactly what kind of God he truly is when it comes to the material side of things and I'm telling you he pulls out all the stops mm -hmm. and you're talking about a God who has a city mm -hmm. and he He's bringing forth the city is not with paid gold. Somebody sung yes. the song, uh, streets paved in gold. Dollars, that's yes. not pavement. Mm -hmm. That's solid gold. Amen. And real gold, God's kind of gold is not so solid you can't see through it. But God is talking about a gold that's translucent. Mm -hmm. He speaks about the walls being of jasper. Mm -hmm. Dollars, you're talking about jasper is the brightest of, of gems that you could see. Well, the walls are going to be so bright mm -hmm. that that you got to be glorified in order to be able right. to, to perceive the fullness of them. Mm -hmm. Gates of pearl. You're talking about not gates of wood, but gates of pearl. Do you know how long it takes to create a pearl in, from a, a natural means? Mm -hmm. God himself is building gates mm -hmm. of pearl mm -hmm. to, to give to us as a, a final city 
to, to rejoice in. Mm-hmm. You're talking about 12 stones or 12 different uh, precious uh, jewels mm-hmm. or gems for the foundation. That's right. God is, God is talking about some glorious stuff for us, mm-hmm. but it doesn't start when we get there. Mm-hmm. It starts where you are right now. Mm-hmm. If you're not able to increase what is in your hands right now, don't believe for one moment that you're going to be able to understand and, and really enjoy the increase that God's planning on bringing into your life. Amen. And it's all about a mindset. You know, I think about the scripture that says, as a man thinking in his heart, so is he. Regardless of what's around you, you know, it's all about how you think. You know, you can be around some people that, you know, on the outside or you be, be around them and you think they have so many things, but you find out they ha- don't have a lot. But it's all about how they carry themselves, their mindset. They know who they are. And I love to see that because they're confident. Regardless of what material possessions they may have, they know who they are. Their mind is uh, reminded by the word of God who they are. They are kings and they are priests. And, you know, if you look at 1 Corinthians chapter 2, it reminds us when when it comes to the mind, it says, For who have known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct us? But we have the mind of Christ. So if you're trying to figure out how do I get my mind to the point where I can really think the way I need to be in my heart, in my spirit, you have the mind of Christ if you think on those things that are spiritual. Because if you go above those verses, it talks about only God can reveal the deep things of God and they're revealed by his spirit. So still the answer is making sure we're on the right spiritual plane with God, that we're in the spirit, meaning that we get get the word, consume the word of God. What does the word of God say about me? Yes, I may be broke today, but they don't have anything to do with tomorrow. And, you know, I think about Apostle. He taught a lesson years ago about I may go to bed poor, but you wake up, you know, all of a sudden I'm wealthy. And I used to literally go to bed sometimes and, you know, during those times of trials and like, you know, today might have been rough. I might have been broke today, but tomorrow is another day. And that's the way we have to live. Expectations. If you don't expect anything, it's not going to happen. You have to expect God to change. Be ready to expect God to move in your life all the time, every single day. If you are looking for something, be on it. Be, you know, be expected. Don't be like, oh, well, if it happens, it happens. If it don't, it don't. You have to be watching. You have to be expecting God to move on your behalf. You know, that reminded me of a song that we used to sing a long time ago, mm-hmm. and it was Expect the Miracle Every Day. Oh, yeah. You know, that, that song looking said some miracle. words, you know, I'm, I'm yeah. looking for a miracle, and I expect a miracle yeah. every day. Yes. You've got to expect God doing some great things in your life every day. The good thing about God is he never sleeps. Mm, that's so, true. So while yeah. you're getting your rest, God is working in your behalf. Mm-hmm. While you're actually laying to bed with a great big issue that you don't seem to be able to resolve, Mm -hmm. God is working on that issue while you sleep so that when you wake up, you wake up to a brand new day, to a brand new opportunity, and you've got to expect God to do great things Mm -hmm. in your life. A lot of us don't get greatness in our lives because we don't expect it. Uh, we, we, We speak of things that that are, are, are negative or things that are bad, and that's that's why it shows up, mm-hmm. you know. And, and then we we brag about it. We say, "Well, I just knew something had to come along to mess up my day." Well, of what? course it did. You, you called it out. It. You that's you right. expected it, so you're gonna get what you expect. Mm-hmm. I believe, as children of God, when we read about this this uh, holy Jerusalem, mm-hmm. we should re- lift our expectations. Mm-hmm. We should begin to recognize that we serve a glory. God. Uh, why would he go through all of this trouble mm-hmm. of all putting all these minerals and all these jewels and all these gems? Why would he do that mm-hmm. at the end of time uh, whenever technically the only ones going to see it are going to be the ones who are righteous, right. the ones who obeyed him? Mm-hmm. Darlings, you got to understand God is not the kind of God who does things half-handedly mm-hmm. and we can't be that way either. Amen. Now that 12th verse Verse says, mm-hmm. and the, and it had a great uh, a wall, great and high, mm-hmm. had twelve gates, and gates had twelve angels, mm-hmm. and the names written thereon, which are the names of the twelve tribes of the children of Israel. Mm-hmm. Think about it: twelve gates, mm-hmm. uh, you know, twelve. Uh, it has uh, four walls, twelve gates, and at each one of the gates, there is an angel. Mm-hmm. Now, you know, those angels are not there to keep folks from getting in the city mm-hmm. or out of the city. 
I know those angels are there to show the magnificence mm -hmm. of God, to assist you as you walk through the gate, mm -hmm. or to assist you as you come out of the gate, to make sure that traffic flows mm -hmm. the way it needs to flow. Mm -hmm. Darlings, you just don't know mm -hmm. just what a blessing it's going to be to have God operating and, and, and bringing this into our presence. Amen. And every time I read this or even mention the 12 tribes of Israel, I think about how God is a covenant God. Here we are. We are still talking about Israel today. You know, you think about his name before he was given that name Israel, which was Jacob. He was a supplanter, a deceiver. But God changed his name. And when he changed his name, we are still talking about Israel today. And even in the, you know, the years to come, you know, there are going to be gates with the 12 tribes, his, his children's name on them. So that reminds me the kind of God we serve. He is a covenant God. And once he changes your life, once he changes your name, he he he's a, you have a covenant with him. We are still speaking of him today, and that blesses me because I remind myself that when I'm with God, you know, I'm the one that can break that, not God. He is married to me forever. He is uh, tied to me forever at my heartstrings, and I love that because even though we see and I read about Jacob's life beforehand, I am blessed to know that he made a decision one day. And when he made that decision that he was going to be with God, that he was going to follow God wholeheartedly, God changed his name. And we are still reading about him. And you look at these gates that are named after his children. And that we're going to be talking about them forever. We're going to be seeing their names forever. To me, that speaks volumes about who God is in our lives and what he wants to do in us. It's forever. So, so you're seeing a city. Mm -hmm. It has four uh, walls. Mm -hmm. And it has... Uh, 12 gates. So that means every wall mm -hmm. has three gates or three entrance ways uh, to it. Mm -hmm. uh, each gate. So on the east, there's three gates. On the north, there's three gates. On the west, there's three gates. And on the south, there's three gates. These three gates are made of pearl. Mm -hmm. These walls are made of jasper. Mm -hmm. So you begin to, to see right away that God means business. When you look at each one of those gates, there's a tribe mm -hmm. of Israel that's named over each one of those gates. There was 12 tribes. Mm -hmm. uh, well, over those 12, uh, those 12 gates are going to be the names of the 12 tribes. And some would say, well, what's the significance? Mm -hmm. Again, as we've stated, it's covenant. Yes. God is a covenant mm -hmm. God. Mm -hmm. If God promises you something, mm -hmm. darlings, you can take it to the a bank. bank. Amen. I'm telling you right now, <laughs> some of you are still, still waiting for God to do something. Thing he promised you he was going to do. Mm -hmm. Well, if God made a promise to you, mm -hmm. then he's going to do exactly what he promised he would do. He's mm -hmm. a covenant God. You know, I know man will, will make a covenant for you, and, and as long as things are going good, and as long as things are sweet and nice, then man will be in covenant with you. But man will break a covenant in a New York second. But God is not a covenant breaker. Mm -hmm. You can depend on what God says. If God will do a thing or promises to do a thing, Mm -hmm. He is going to do it. Amen. You can bank on it. Amen. And that's why I, I like what Numbers 23 and 19. Matter of fact, when I first started out, it was one of the first scriptures I memorized because I needed to remember this. But it says, God is not a man that he shall lie, neither the son of man that he shall repent. Have he said it and shall he not do it? Or has he spoken it and shall he not make it good? This is what God, that's his character. That's who God is. So although men may make us promises and break them for whatever the reason, when God promises something, he's going to do it. He is always going to keep our end. And the one thing I love about God, regardless of whether I keep my end or not, he still keeps his end. He is not de depending on me to keep my side. You know, I think about when you were younger, you made peaky promises. And that really meant, oh, if you make a peaky promise, then you really have to do it. But God, you know, he doesn't have to um, get our pinkies. He doesn't have to do anything. He is a God that keeps his promises. And that's what we can rest on. And, you know, a lot of times we, we get comfortable. When I say comfortable, we start trusting men because, or we start trusting people because we feel like, okay, they, they know me. They know my spirit. I can trust them. But we still have to remember we can only, as far as keeping promises, we're frail. We, we're going to break promises sometimes. Sometimes it's not intentionally. And the only person that we can rely on to never fail, to never break a promise is God. So when you begin to, to, to examine uh, the, the life around you, mm -hmm. you begin to recognize that when the foundation is laid right, mm -hmm. when you do the right thing, then you've got a God who will stand behind 
his word mm -hmm. and back it up. If something's not being backed up, the mm -hmm. first thing I would examine is the words that, that, that started it. Wow. Because if the words that started it were not words that are the, were the words of God based mm -hmm. upon faith in the words of God, then whatever was done uh, won't, won't, won't last. It, it can't hold, uh, hold up. In other words, whenever you begin to do certain things and speak certain things, make certain that you've got the word backing it up. Because mm -hmm. if the word's backing it up, then God's going to make sure uh, that it comes to pass. Amen. Notice, if you will, in this um, uh, 13 verse, it says, uh, I mean, the 14 verses, mm -hmm. and the, the wall of the city had 12 mm -hmm. foundations, mm -hmm. and in them the names of the 12 apostles of the Lamb. Mm -hmm. See, uh, whenever we teach fivefold ministry, when we talk about apostles of today, we make a distinction. We let you know that that, that the apostles of today and the apostles that were after mm -hmm. the initial 12 apostles, they uh, they have a distinction different from the apostles of the Lamb. Mm -hmm. The apostles of the Lamb represent the 12 that Jesus chose mm -hmm. and then the one that was actually used uh, or chosen to replace Jews. These are the apostles of the Lamb. Mm -hmm. Paul is not a part of this. You will not see the name of Paul on these foundations or the name of Timothy or mm -hmm. Titus or Barnabas or, or Silas or any of them, uh, Apollos. These apostles will not be on these uh, foundations of the walls, but the foundations of the walls of the holy city will be the 12 apostles of the Lamb. Mm -hmm. That means the 12 that Jesus chose uh, and then with Judas uh, uh, hanging himself, uh, Mattathias, who is the one who was chosen to take his place. Their names will be on the 12 foundations. So you see, there's going to be 12 foundations of the wall. That wall does not need 12 foundations to hold it up. Mm -hmm. But God wants all of eternity mm -hmm. to remember that the foundation of mm -hmm. all things are built upon wow. the, the uh, foundation of the apostles and the prophets mm -hmm. with Jesus being the chief cornerstone. Right. All these things make sense mm -hmm. when you begin to see the end game of God mm -hmm. and begin to recognize what God is actually uh, uh, bringing to pass uh, at the end of time. Amen. And it brings home, too, as far as your foundation in Christ. You know, it's important to know, you know, especially when we're going through things, you always want to make sure you have a sure foundation. Who taught you? Who brought you up? Who who mentored you? Because if your foundation is not right, there's going to be a crack in your 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 house um, spiritually. And I remember we had a home one time that we bought, and you know there went, there was a crack in the brick, and we that automatically told us, okay, that we need to get someone in here to look at the foundation because there's some foundational issues. And of course, you know those things had to be fixed. So here lets us know the importance of your foundation. Make sure your foundation is right, that is built on the word of God, that is built on, built on the principles of God. And sometimes growing up in the Lord, you may not can help who your spiritual parents are, but there comes a time when you can't help it. You can like, okay, you know, I need more. I need to make sure it's solid. I need to make sure it's built on the right principles because there will come a time in your life where you'll be able to recognize what you're getting and recognize whether it rec uh, lines up with the word of God or not, but make sure your foundation is where it needs to be because if your foundation is where it needs to be, then you cannot fail. Yeah, and the bottom line, it, it goes on to say that uh, the foundation of the wall of the city were garnished with all manner of precious stones. Mm -hmm. It said the first foundation was jasper, the second sapphire, the third uh, chalcedony, uh, the fourth an emerald, the mm -hmm. fifth uh, sardonyx, uh, the sixth sardius, uh, the seventh um, chrysolite, mm -hmm. uh, the the uh, eighth beryl, the ninth topaz, the tenth a, a chrysoprophus, and the eleventh a jacinth, and the twelfth uh, was was actually an amethyst. So you see, he, they had the names of the twelve apostles of the Lamb, mm -hmm. uh, Peter, James, John, and the rest of the dis disciples had their names on the twelve walls, and then each one, I mean, foundations, mm -hmm. and then each foundation was built of a different kind of precious stone. Mm -hmm. Now, can you imagine the wealth of such a thing? Mm -hmm. Can you imagine, for for instance, uh, how God was decking this city out? Mm -hmm. Why does God go through all of this? Because you see, God mm -hmm. is actually uh, get, bringing forth something that was prepared for a special kind of people. Mm -hmm. You can't just present anything to a people who will have gone through what you and I have gone through. That's Listen right. to me. Whenever we come out victorious, 
victorious mm -hmm. on the other side. Whenever we walk through this earth, having put the devil under our feet, when we're able to walk in power and authority mm -hmm. and the empowerment of the spirit of God on this side of glory, when we get to the other side, God's not just going to put anything out for us to, to dwell in. He's not just going to have any place for us to live mm -hmm. uh, that looks any kind of way, but he mm -hmm. pulls out all the stops. And when you look at it, all you're going to see is glory. All you're going to see is wealth. All you're going to see is the care that God took in building a final resting place for all of his people of righteousness. Mm -hmm. God's a great big God, Don. You need to, Lord, you, you, I, I wish I could come out of this screen and shake some of you because right. some of you don't know, really understand who you really are. Mm -hmm. You're living like a pauper, not realizing that you are a king. Right. You are living and, and talking and putting up with a bunch of stuff that you don't have to put up with. But the reason you're having to put up with it right now mm -hmm. is because of what's coming out of your mouth and mm -hmm. what is hidden in your heart. But if you can get your heart right, if you can get your heart to a place where it's in communion with God and it only wants what God wants and it wants to humble itself to be yes. mindly used of God and then begin to speak the right things mm -hmm. out of your mouth, darlings, you will turn your situation around. Mm -hmm. You don't need the cavalry. You don't need some great spiritual leader to come bring deliverance to you. Deliverance is on your tongue only if it's in your heart. If you You've got deliverance in your heart and you speak it with your tongue, mm -hmm. it is done. Listen to me. There are a lot of men and women of God who are trying to activate deliverance. Right. You don't need to activate mm -hmm. deliverance. You need to walk in it. Mm -hmm. You don't need to help somebody uh, uh, be delivered. You are, if you are born again, you Amen. are delivered. Amen. What you need is you need somebody to pour into you an understanding as to the fullness of who you are. Mm -hmm. But you don't need to be delivered. You need to be matured. Yes. You need to grow up. You, you're acting like a baby. Mm -hmm. you're, you're, you're moving and functioning like a baby mm -hmm. in the body of Christ. I tell you, darlings, grow up. Mm -hmm. Your deliverance is not in something you need to, to have somebody put on you. Mm -hmm. Your deliverance is in the fact that you will grow up. Mm -hmm. Deliverance was given to you when, when you were born again. When Jesus turned your life around, mm -hmm. when you became a new creature in Christ mm -hmm. deliverance was locked up mm -hmm. on the inside of you just waiting to be released. Oh, you yes. don't need to be delivered. You need to be properly released. Amen. And I don't mean having somebody slap your head with oil. <laughs> I mean you need yes. somebody to impart into you. Someone to pour into you. Yes. Someone to teach you the fullness of who you really are. Because you know what? You are greater than anything mm -hmm. you're facing because of the greatness that's inside of you. This is not a greatness that you made, mm -hmm. but it's the greatness of the Spirit of God which is on the inside of you, which makes you greater. Mm -hmm. So greater is He. Mm -hmm. Not greater is me, but greater is He. Mm -hmm. Not greater is me, right. but greater is He that is within me than He mm -hmm. that is in the world. Daughters, it's time to wake up and grow up. Amen. And when I think about, you know, talk about deliverance, you know, in the natural, when you deliver something, you take it from one location to the next. Well, you know, we're being delivered all the time. When I read the word of God and it changes me and I get it, the impartation, it's taking my mind from one place to the next. But when I stay stuck, that means, you know, a lot of times I am stuck. I am not changing because my mind is not being delivered by the word of God. I'm not moving. I'm in the same place that I was five years ago because I hadn't allowed the word, word of God to deliver me, to take me somewhere else other than the place that. I am. So we got to remember we're being delivered all the time. And I know there's certain, you know, certain instances where it takes, you know, the oil and it takes some tearing at the altar. I'm not taking away from that, but we got to re uh, realize that it does not take all that. You know, I growing up, I used to think, well, if I go to the altar and I sweat and I roll and all that, then I'm going to get delivered. But I found out where well, I could leave the altar and still be not be changed because I didn't have any understanding about what I need to be delivered from. It was the word of God that I needed, not all the action and and all that without the word. I needed the word of God. And getting back to the lesson as well as far as <laughs> the <laughs> colors. When you were talking about the colors, I thought about how God is. You know, color brings life. You know, I love color. I love nature. And I think about the colors of the stones and how, you know, without doing anything else but existing, they speak life. They bring life. And that's how God is. 
if you are in a place or, you know, where you're not experiencing life and life in abundance, you have to really just ask yourself, what's going on? Because it's not God. God is a God of life. He is a God of excitement. He is a God of progression. So when he is in our lives the way he needs to be, this is what we experience here on this earth, just like with these colors everywhere. And that's one of the things I appreciate about seeing different nations and going to different nations, you know, them experiment with color and celebration because you feel the life, you feel the celebration. And this is what's going to be going on here. Not only are we going to be surrounded by these precious stones and all these colors, they're going to be a life of celebration there. And that's what we see when we see these stones and the colors that they represent and the colors that they are. You, you look at the 17th verse, it says, and he measured the wall thereof. 144 cubits, which is about 1,500 miles. Mm -hmm. um, and it was according to the measure of man, the angel. And the building of the wall of it was of jasper, and the mm -hmm. city was pure gold. Now, not just the streets, the not city. just the foundation, but the, the city was pure gold, like unto clear glass. Gold as clear as glass. Mm -hmm. It went on to say, and the twelve gates were twelve pearls. Mm -hmm. Every several gate was one pearl, and the street of the city was pure gold. So the city is gold, the streets are gold, mm -hmm. and as tr and it was translucent as grass. Can you imagine a gold city that's translucent as that you grass. can see through, mm -hmm. or, or or streets that are translucent? Mm -hmm. uh, and 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 you begin to recognize that uh, the angel was was actually giving us. The measurements. Now, mm -hmm. when you try to put that in our realm of understanding, mm -hmm. then uh, you you would actually you're talking about a, a city that measures about uh, half the distance of New York and California. Mm -hmm. You're talking about mm -hmm. one that is a city that's the size of about two thirds of the United States. Mm -hmm. So this is a mighty mighty big city. And he, and he said, I saw no temple therein for the Lord God Almighty. And the Lamb are the temple of it. No need for steeple church buildings. Mm -hmm. No need for a temple. But who is the temple? Yeah, God is the temple. temple. Jesus is the temple. Uh, you'll find that the city had uh, no need of the sun, mm -hmm. neither of the moon to, sh to shine in it. And the glory of God did lighten it. And the Lamb is the light thereof. See, God is the supreme light. Jesus is the supreme light. Mm -hmm. We won't need the sun, the moon, the stars because God is in it. Mm -hmm. Wherever God is, there is light. That's a revelation for somebody. And the nation of them which are saved shall walk in the light of it, and the kings of the earth do bring their glory and honor into it. We are still not talking about unsaved folk. Mm -hmm. We're talking about righteous men, men and women who are kings and, and priests. Who What you're learning to do right now is going to be what you're going to be doing uh, when, you, when you're going into the holy city. So you see, again, this is not talking about unborn, unsaved individuals. These are talking about glorified saints. You know, it said of every nation, kindred, and tongue mm -hmm. at the marriage supper of the Lamb. Well, here they are meandering and walking and functioning in and throughout this city. Mm -hmm. It says, and the gates of it shall be shut, uh, shall not be shut at all by, uh, by the day uh, nor night there. You're not going to have to close the gates. You're not going to uh, uh, have to find a way to to uh, to keep uh, uh, the, the enemy out or any of this stuff because all of them are going to be uh, a, a part of this. Every part of them mm -hmm. uh, are going to be, uh, uh, everyone that's there is going to be righteous. Mm -hmm. We don't have to be worried about thieves and robbers and things of this nature. It says the nations of them which are, are saved shall walk in the light of it. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, it's, it's all of us, born again believers. Mm -hmm. And I like what Romans 8 says. They talk about, you know, it's talking about the glory, but I think about this light that we're not going to need the sun or the moon. It says, and if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. It's so that it be that we suffer with him, that we may also be glorified together. And then it says, for I reckon that, reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. So when we think about this light and this glory, this is what it's talking about. You know, it's nothing here can compare to the glory that's going to be revealed in us. Nothing we suffer today can be compared with the glory that's going to be revealed. And we can just remember that there's nothing on this earth that we can suffer, that can be taken away from us, that's going to be compared with the glory that's going to be revealed in us. So we, we can live our lives knowing that, yes, it may be this way today, but there's still nothing compared to what I'm going to witness, what I'm going to experience 
at the end, at the end time when I, cause we never going to die. But when we get to this point, it's nothing compared to the glory that God is revealing in us every day. And many of us, we have the mistaken understanding that we're learning to walk in authority and power and be empowered by God today so that we will be able to, to, uh, to actually handle mm -hmm. the tribulation. Listen to me, darlings, you are not getting empowered. You're not learning how to walk in power and authority uh, so that you can actually put up with the mess in this world. Mm -hmm. No, you're actually learning how to walk in power and authority for the world to come, mm -hmm. which simply means when we get to glory, we're not going to need a rehearsal. We are not going to need practice mm -hmm. because we would have been practicing walking in God's authority and in God's purpose and in God's will and in God's empowerment, this side of glory. I am not and you either, we are not being empowered mm -hmm. to put up with the things in this world. And then once it's over with, then we, uh, we got the power of the Lord uh, just to, 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 uh, to actually rest in us mm -hmm. and not move and function right. anymore. No, darlings, you are being empowered for this next transition. Mm -hmm. You are being empowered so that when you get to glory, you will not need a rehearsal. You will walk around as kings and priests. You will walk around around in the authority and the power of God, and you will be a creative being mm -hmm. in a created uh, uh, atmosphere and a created existence that God has made for only the righteous. Only the righteous will see these translucent streets of gold. Mm -hmm. Only the righteous will be able to see the city of gold. Only the righteous will be able to walk through the gates of pearl, rub their hands against the walls of jasper. Only the righteous are going to see the 12 foundational uh, stones of the, uh, the great holy city. Mm -hmm. Only the righteous are going to be able to walk worthy of a place that God is creating, not because our worthiness is of our own uh, Abilities, but it's because our worthiness is we will have learned how to walk and talk and live in the authority of Christ on this side of glory. So that when we get to the other side of glory, we will not be looking to, to have a new kind of glory. It'll be the fullness of the glory that's already beginning to work in us. Did you know you are being glorified right now? Every day that you walk like Jesus, every day that you line up with the word of God, every day day that you allow the, the power of mm -hmm. God to flow through you, you mm -hmm. are being glorified. Yeah, How can you be glorified? Because God has justified you. Do you know what's in the in the eighth chapter of Romans? Okay. It makes it plain and simple that who he called, uh, he actually justified. Mm -hmm. And who he justified, yeah, he actually good. glorified. Mm -hmm. You are not waiting for this glory on the other side. Mm -hmm. God is glorifying you right now. How is it happening? The more you obey him, mm -hmm. the more you uh, deny self, the more you become glorious, the more the glory of God radiates through your being. Amen. And as you look at um, the latter part of this chapter, it talks about how the gates were never shut. But it says in verse 25, and the gates of it shall not be shut all, all by day, for there shall be no night there. And they shall bring the glory and honor of the nations into it. And then verse 27 says, And there shall in no wise enter into it anything that defileth, neither whatsoever worketh abomination, or maketh a lie, but they which are written in the Lamb's book of life. So it talks about how this gate is never going to be shut. There's no night and no day, but only those that are written in the Lamb's book of life is going to be able to enter. And can you imagine, you know, a, a city that has a gate, like, like the pearls that we're talking about, but there's no, you know, it's not shut, but you're going to be able to go in and out because your name is written in the Lamb's book of life. No limitations, mm -hmm. darlings. No limitations. Listen to me. Your no limitations uh, does not start at the end of time. Mm -hmm. It starts in the here and now. Yeah. You need to begin to get used to not being limited by what mm -hmm. limitations man lays down. Mm -hmm. You need to begin to get accustomed to walking and living a life with no limits. Mm -hmm. A life that's fully able to function calling things that that uh, be not exactly. as though they were. I can't help but keep getting back to a point that we've been emphasizing over and over, and that is, darlings, you are not going to uh, be walking in a glorified mm -hmm. form once you get over there, but mm -hmm. you are being glorified right now. The more you line up with Christ, the more glory you walk in. And the authority, mm -hmm. the power, the empowerment that you're getting right now is not for you to function in this world and survive. 
survive mm -hmm. this world. It's not for you to be able to go through the tribulation period, right. but it's so that you will go, go into heaven being fully aware of what's happening and how you're to function and operate in heaven. Mm -hmm. And the way we start now is, you know, taking the limits off now. I remember a series that uh, Andrew Womack taught is about don't limit God. We start now. Don't limit him now. Don't wait like Apostle keeps saying till we get there to have no limits. We have no limits now if we always choose to believe God. Not what the world says. Not what you know everybody. What everybody else is thinking or what everybody else is saying. But what does God say about, about your situation? And always know that nothing is impossible with God. All things are possible to them that believe. So we got to remember the limits. If we have limits, the limits that we created and we can do something about that. So just, just stay, stay in God the way you need to and keep growing, keep maturing mm -hmm. because, you see, God has already delivered you. Mm -hmm. uh, you just haven't been taught the fullness of that deliverance. When it comes to moving and flowing in the fullness of God, just remember, darlings, greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. And with God, all things are possible to them that believe. God bless you. We love you. We're looking forward to being with you again on next week. Uh, to then, we want you to move and operate in the fullness of what God has in store for your future. Again, we're going to be going into the book of Genesis uh, mm -hmm. after our next uh, uh, next chapter. Mm -hmm. So get yourself prepared because we are far from yes. being done Amen. and it's far from being over. We have only just begun. Amen. God bless.